extinction and conservation. This video is going to mainly focus on animals that are going extinct and the efforts of conserving these animals for future generations and what you as a fish keeper can do to help and how you can help conserve some of these animals and protect them from going extinct in your home aquaria. If you are a new person to my channel, welcome. I highly recommend subscribing and hitting that notification icon so you do not miss out on any of the cool videos that I'm bringing to you. And for all my regular subscribers, thank you so much for your regular subscription. And please share this video with all your networks so other people can learn about this valuable topic and this issue at hand, which is the extinction of all the fish species that live in freshwater ecosystems in our planet. So this video is going to focus on freshwater mostly. I will touch it briefly on some marine ecosystems and uh, issues at hand. But mostly I, I want to focus my channel as well as a lot of my videos, current videos for freshwater ecosystems because I believe that our freshwater ecosystems are more at risk than our marine ecosystems and there is a lot of evidence to prove this. So I highly recommend uh, doing more research and getting involved and doing your part. That includes saving animals from going extinct like what I'm talking about here, uh, saving ecosystems, so contributing, donating to different projects, uh, different programs that are working towards saving certain ecosystems from going extinct, uh, you know, ecological programs where you can go out and clean up rivers, you know, clean up debris, all these type of things, they all help. But all those require you to leave your house and, uh, you know, take up time out of your work. What I'm talking about is literally not going to help have you leaving your house. You can still be in your house. You can enjoy your aquarium and still save animals. So this is essentially where I believe a lot of us can help uh, with our busy schedules and lives. And this video is going to cover all that. So hope you guys watch till the end and let's get into this video. Produced by Mali. Extinction and conservation. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about extinction and conservation of animals that are going extinct. What's the need of it and why we should be conserving a lot of these animals and what you as an aquarist can do to help some of the animals that you might even have already in your fish room that you might not even know that they are going extinct in their natural habitat. The reality is we are killing majority of the biodiversity in our planet. Whether we like to admit it or not, we are directly and indirectly impacting most of the animal habitats or natural habitats in our planet. And in turn, we are destroying the environments a lot of these animals live in and in turn the animals themselves. People always point fingers at the aquarium trade or the pet trade or illegal smuggling and so on and so forth as one of the main sources of animal extinction but the reality of the fact is it is direct human activity like agriculture development and other things like dams and so on and so forth that is actually the culprit of a lot of this problem now regardless of who created the problem and why it's happening there's nothing individually that anybody any of us can do to stop it except to do our little part that we can and that is to try to preserve as many of these species as possible in home aquaria and this is where you come in you as an aquarist has the ability to preserve some of these animals in home aquaria like the first thing anybody would think is yes yeah, zebra placos but zebra placos are not the only animal that needs protection a really good example is these guys come from a stretch of river that is under threat to human activity by human activity and yes they are a flagship animal they are the water pandas and yes they are probably going to be one of the animals that a lot of people are going to focus on preserving and which is great but you got to think there's other hundreds and thousands of other animals species that are endemic to that particular river uh, not just fish but also amphibians insects uh, mollusks other types of invertebrates you know small animals plants other animals that depend on that stretch of river that are all at threat of going extinct. So it's not just fish, it's not just these types of fish, and this just not is not just a problem that happens in South America. This is a problem that is in, that is a problem for our entire planet. Pretty much every ecosystem in our planet that is still intact 
is a threat. There is not a lot of uh, land that is put aside for conservation, and even the land that is put aside for conservation is put aside with strings attached, like with human activity still in there. So the environments are getting degraded daily. So the reality is, a lot of these species of animals, especially when it comes to freshwater fish, for example, will go extinct in the coming decades. So a lot of these animals will no longer exist. Uh, and uh, they would not be able to bring them out from the rivers because the rivers would not have them anymore. They would not be able to bring them from other countries because the countries that have them would no longer have them because they would be already extinct by that point. And if we do not preserve some of these animals in home aquaria as much as possible, then chances are these animals will be lost completely to our species. So like our future generations, like your kids and your grandkids, for example, will never see what a zebra pleco might look like, except in a picture book, just like how I would look at a dodo bird or a great auk, you know, like, which is a penguin-like animal that is separately evolved from penguins, and it has the exact same look and behavioral characteristics of the penguins, and it occupies the same niche in the ecosystem as a penguin, except the great auks live, lived in uh, the northern hemisphere, uh, in the Arctic, whereas the penguins live in the southern hemisphere. Now, the great auks were completely eradicated by humans in the 1800s, and I now cannot ever see one because they are gone. And this is an animal I truly love, and I, I really would love to see one, and I've only seen stuffed specimens and pictures that were hand-drawn by other people. The same thing applies to a lot of types of birds, same thing applies to a lot of types of fish. A lot of the fish that are in our were in our ecosystems have gone extinct and that we cannot no longer see them or bring them back to life or have them in our aquariums or even for our kids to see them in the future generations except to show them pictures and say look how biodiverse our planet used to be so this is a real real problem we are not the only species living on this planet we are just one of millions of other animals that live different types of animals that live or cohabit coexist together in this planet and all of our existence depends on all of us being alive. All these ecosystems are, are interdependent on each other and uh, if you guys have been following a lot of my channel, you might know that I always talk about balancing your aquarium and uh, the, the role the snails might have to play with your fish or the, the, the role the bacteria might have to play with your fish and all this stuff. So everything is interdependent on each other. So when people think that, okay, it's an animal that lives in another part of the world, does not affect me, it truly does actually affect you. When a lot of these animals go extinct, their ecosystems will also collapse because they're no longer being functional the way that these ecosystems have evolved to function because they've evolved with these animals together. So the ecosystem and the animals evolved together to where it is. And the animals have a significant role in maintaining the ecosystem as it is. Uh, so without the animals that ecosystem will also collapse and it means essentially that a lot of these river and stream and lake ecosystems are no longer going to be habitable by a lot of the animals that used to live in them. So until people become more intelligent about this problem and we are more conscious about our own impact on our planet, this will continue to happen and there's nothing most of us can do. So I mean I don't want to be a helpless human being that is going to put up my hands and say there's nothing I can do so therefore I'm just going to not do anything. There is something I can do which is to try and save as many different species as possible. And this is the invisible arc, this is the, the CARES uh, priority fish list, there's a lot of different programs, there's fish clubs that uh, participate in these type of programs, there's all kinds of different things, there's a lot of independent uh, conservationists and collections of animals and breeders and so on and so forth and all these people play a key and vital role in preservation and conservation and this is essentially why I want to make this video and I'll probably make more videos like this for you guys this is going to be a one-shot straight video I'm probably not going to do too much editing but essentially what I want to say is when you think of conservation a lot of people automatically assume zebra placos. Yes, zebra placos do need our protection. Aside from zebra placos or other types of placos, which are a lot of them are probably endangered or at the risk of going extinct due to like habitat loss and so on and so forth, you have to realize the the, the earth is a large place with so many different small 
micro habitats like the Amazon or you know so, so many macro habitats like the Amazon. So uh, there might be rivers that are in Borneo that are being clear cut. The you know the the forest is being clear cut, so the river is being damaged or degraded. Uh, mining could be happening, and the animals that come from these particular spa spaces are no longer going to be able to live in them. So we have to take it upon ourselves to find out all these different types of animals and put them into conservation and breeding programs. And the governments and scientific organizations do not have funding allocated for this particular purpose. So it is now left to you guys and us, essentially all of us, to essentially save these animals from going extinct. So what can you do? Get involved. Start dedicating tank space in your fish room to rare animals. Start reproducing some of these rare animals. Start keeping species-only tanks. Start keeping the lines pure. Like, for example, if you have a specific fish that comes from a specific river, keep those fish separate from all the other fish that come from different rivers or other tributaries that are similar to the fish that you might have that comes from a specific locale. And, and things like that. And, uh, and you might think, hey, South American fish are a good thing to, to, to start with. But the reality is uh, a really important thing is to save a lot of the fish that come from Africa, for example. The Rift Lakes are really at a bad shape. They all require your help, especially Lake Victoria. Uh, it's, a really, uh, a, it's called a disaster, uh, an ecological disaster, literally, the, the, the lake. Of, because of what has happened in the last 50 years there. So we really have to take it into account of all these different habitats all, all around the world. Like Borneo, for example, a lot of the animals that come from Borneo are going to go extinct in the next 20 years because of palm oil farming. So because of our insatiable appetite for this cheap oil substitute, which is really unhealthy for human consumption, it is essentially destroying an entire island's ecosystem. A large island, not a small island, an island larger than most countries. An entire ecosystem from that island is going to be destroyed to, to satisfy our need for this cheap oil substitute, which essentially kills us. You know, like palm oil is one of the most worst things that you can consume, and it's in pretty much all of our food. Pretty, everything we eat. Could have palm oil. So this is a real problem ecologically as well as uh, for human beings. But as, as a part of this video, I'm just going to focus on the ecological impact of it, uh, not the impact it has on the, the extensive human population. So having said that, these environments that uh, are being destroyed for human purposes, the animals that come from it really do need your help. Not just the fish, the, the flora, uh, and the fauna. So the flora is the plant life and the fauna is the animal life. The invertebrates, uh, uh, the, the, the frogs that might live in them, the snails, the reptiles, the amphibians that might have inhabit them, the various kinds of insects, you know. So there's a lot of different animals that you, you can help with. And uh, so start small, start with some easier fish. Uh, it, like an insurance colony is just an, a group of animals that you are breeding and keeping that is extinct already in the wild or pretty much critically endangered and at the brink of extinction. And a good example of uh, insurance colony is obviously these guys. Another good example of insurance colony is uh, Tenictheus albinubus, which is the pure strain of white clouds. Uh, so if you can get uh, pure white cloud minnows, I, I do have some. Uh, I've had this group or this particular line or whatever it is called now. Um, for the last probably five or six years. Uh, they breed in my tanks, they're quite prolific, quite easy to breed, uh, quite beautiful when they're small as well as when they're large. And uh, they're really nice when they're small though actually. When they're really small, when they're about half inch, they're gorgeous fish. They call the poor man's neon tetra. And you might think, yeah, they're the, the white cloud minnows are very prolific fish, there are so many of them in the hobby. But the problem is, many of the fish you are gonna find at pet stores and stuff are not the pure uh, Tinectus albinubus. The, the ones you are going to find most of the world right now are going to be hybrids between several different Tinectus species. So uh, to keep pure animals is, is essentially uh, key to conservation uh, at, at this level. So you want to make sure 
that you are not mixing uh, different animals that could potentially hybridize and, and weaken the line that you might have or the genetic make makeup of the particular fish that you might have. So really pay attention to that one detail and uh, keep the species in their own tanks with other fish that they cannot interbreed with. Uh, if you can keep them in specifically in, the, in a tank by themselves, that's even more ideal. And uh, essentially, save different types of animals. If you do have different types of water, we all do, check the type of water you have, find out exactly what your water parameters are the tap are, then look at the fish that live in that particular set of parameters that require your help, and keep those fish because then you are not going to be forced to change your water or alter your th uh, parameters or do anything. You can just take water out of your faucet and do a water change, which is going to make it easier for you, which is going to make sure that, uh, which is going to guarantee that you're not going to be overwhelmed keeping these animals long term, which is the goal. You have to be able to keep them long term. So to do that, you would want to keep things that are not a big strain on your time and your space and your lifestyle. So like, if you do have a large enough fish room and RO machine and, and, and can produce tons and tons of RO water for real cheap, then yes, you can keep most of the different animals that come from all over the world. But for the people that have a few tanks, don't have a large setup like that, don't have an RO machine, and are using tap water like myself, um, all my fish live in tap water. And that's why I keep these types of fish, because these are the type of fish that do best in my tap water. So it's, it's that simple. If I could... If African cichlids did better in my tap water than these guys, I would purely keep fish that come from Lake Victoria and many of the other uh, African small lakes and rift lakes and stuff like that, and fish that come from Madagascar and stuff, but they require a little bit more hardness than what I have naturally out of my tap, so that requires me to do a little bit more, more work. and. Uh, in, with the busy schedule, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, when I do have a larger facility, that's another thing I want to do is keep a lot of the animals that come from different parts of the world in their own rooms, actually. Like, so I'll have one room for African fish, one room for South American fish, one large room for Asian fish, so on and so forth. That's a, that's a goal that I have for my future fish room, and I uh, hope that becomes a reality soon so I can actually do more with the fish, uh, different types of fish. But at this moment, I am limited to the tanks that I have and limited to the type of water that I can get out of my tap. And uh, I'm limited to keeping the type of fish that I can in the water that comes out of my faucet directly. So the most of the fish that you see in my fish room live direct in direct tap water that comes directly out of my tap. I do alter it a little bit for breeding. I might put a little bit of oak leaves to make the water a little bit softer. Uh, I might use the nitrate resins to extend the amount of time the, the acids can build up in the tank uh, over time or to reduce the amount of water changes I do so that the water is a little bit more stable over time. And uh, But aside from that, I don't have to do much to keep many of these animals. I can keep this entire fish room running while having a full-time job of like 60, 60 plus hours a week. So that's where you want to be because a lot of us do have other jobs out of, outside of this. Uh, fish hobby so like we're not I'm not asking any of you guys to quit your day job and start breeding endangered fish for a living but you will also make some money from breeding some of the rare endangered animals because they do especially in the hobby they do collect a decent amount of money uh, when you do sell offspring and there's a huge demand for a lot of these animals because they're no longer available uh, in the hobby for a lot of them so um, you know like do some research, find out what types of fish need your help that you particularly can help with your own water and your own setups and then start going from there and uh, join a fish club. You know, I, I'm a new member of the Peel Region Aquarium Club. I just uh, was in a meeting and I talked about this with them earlier and so it just really prompted me to make this video for you guys and uh, bring some more awareness to the, the issue at hand. This is not something a lot of people discuss at all because we, a lot of times people don't think that our freshwater ecosystems are at, as at threat as our saltwater ecosystems or our oceans. But the reality is our freshwater ecosystems are at more threat than our ocean ecosystems. The animals that live in our freshwater ecosystems only have 0.025% of all the water in the world to live in. That's how much fresh water is there. 
like for that that we can access like in terms of rivers and stuff like that and so the, the this very finite resource is also what we like to use and live beside and all this stuff so if you guys probably watch my last video about this which is the video I talk about the cares fish preservation or uh, the the cares fish priority list and uh, so if you guys haven't I'll put a link to that video up here so you guys can check it out essentially talks about how much water there is and 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 you know what the priority cares priority list is and why the importance of this is you know, from a scientific point of view as well as from a conservation point of view and this video is more of a easy to digest form uh, just to bring awareness to that same issue but from a different perspective from a fish keepers point of view and uh, also to make it easier for other fish keepers to actually to, to help and contribute in this manner in this uh, endeavor so I hope you guys learned something valuable in this video and I hope you like this type of content if you do please comment and let me know what you like and if you don't like anything that I said please comment and let me know if I made a mistake please help me clarify comment section is there for you guys as always thank you so much if you are a new member subscribe to the channel hit that notification icon so you do not miss out on any of these cool videos and as always thank you thank you thank you so much for continued love and support let's get the channel to 3,000 members as soon as possible so share this video with all your networks and uh, it's really valuable information I think that people should be sharing anyways even uh, just to help other people out so that does really help out the channel as well as everybody else so thank you for doing that anybody that is sharing and uh, I'll see you on the next video God bless you all